Okay, you guys, this is now our immaculate spoiler talk. We did a whole lengthy non-spoiler review, so go back and check that out in case you have not seen that. If you don't want to know stuff, people want to know things ahead of time sometimes. I would not, but some folks do. So Tim Grierson and I are going to break it all down if you're ready. Last warning, spoiler, spoiler. It's a miracle. You are with child. Crazy shit goes down. They basically like impregnate her with Jesus DNA from one of the nails from the cross. Um, it's nutty. And she bludgeons the Reverend Mother with a crucifix and she chokes. I don't know what his name is. I haven't been Catholic for a while. Your Eminence? Who's that? He's not a Monsignor, is he? I don't know what that is. He's like a cardinal or a bishop. Or... He's like an elder in the church, whatever. She like yeah. strangles. She chokes the guy with a rosary. And then there's this long, long shot. And we alluded to this in our non-spoiler review. Incredible long take that requires so much of her as she claws her way out of the catacombs. Her water is broken. Mm -hmm. And like on all fours, grunts out her demon spawn. And then the sound design here, Tim, was so chilling. Like when the baby comes out, like you're waiting to hear that cry, right? Every movie where someone gives birth, you're like waiting for that cry and you don't hear that cry. You hear like a ring. <laughs> and it's, it's horrifying, but you don't see the baby. They don't show you the baby. And then the camera holds on her face and she walks over and she grabs a boulder and you see her covered in blood and snot and tears. And she lifts it above her head and brings it down on the thing. And it cuts to black. And that was like, whoa, that was bold. That was mm -hmm. choice. And I'm so impressed by the acting that she has to do in that one long single take because it's just, she pushed, literally pushes it so hard, so far. It's like, oh my God, how, how much more? And, and, and she's had like this totally like, ex officio c-section like a bad like that's gonna leave a scar she can't wear a bikini after that no no i also <laughs> i don't think she can be a nun after this either so i have uh, i have two questions for you please yes the first one was as you were watching the final scene did you think she was going to kill the baby no did even you? when even when she lifted the the oh. rock boulder, even oh, yeah, she was at that at, point, yeah. But even at that point, did you think she wasn't going to do it? Because I still thought they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. It's going to be my prediction was going to be as I watched that final scene was she's gone through this terrible ordeal, horrific ordeal. She's going to yeah. kill this baby, but she can't do it. Because the power of motherhood is still so strong that she can't do, and that's going to be the twist at the end. That even oh. though she wants to get out of it, oh, she, you know, motherhood is even stronger than the fact that this is a demon Jesus baby or whatever it is. When they actually did it, I thought, I did not actually think they were going to do this. Yeah. I give them some credit because, frankly, it's kind of an abortion metaphor at the end of the movie and i thought this is still a hollywood movie they're not gonna do it and i was actually kind of impressed to be perfectly honest yeah i did not think i did not think that they were going to do it my second question was <laughs> i have never had a baby my wife and i don't have kids how close was that uh in your own experience to having nick because there were parts where i was watching and going okay so her water breaks um, and then she's got to like, you know, drag herself through some catacombs. Like we said, uh, she's being chased. She's kicking, the, she's kicking the person who's chasing her. I was thinking this all seems extraordinarily hard once <laughs> your water, once yeah. your water has, 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 has burst open and you're about ready to have a baby. I mean, I don't go to a movie like this for realism, but it just seemed mm -hmm. so over the top. And I have to say in a way, which I think a lot of the movie is not. Yeah. And, and as fun a way where it's like, I mean, listen, when her water breaks, she goes, God damn it. Which is like I think one of the funniest <laughs> lines in the movie. There's a legitimately funny moment. And yeah. I think it gets to the spirit of what I wanted the movie to be, which is, I think as an audience, you want to go, 
yeah, Cecilia, kill all those people. You want her to mess them up. I don't think there's enough of that in the film. And, and near the end, it gets to that point. Yeah. We haven't talked about, hmm. um, yes, there is a, a, you know, for you hardcore Catholics out there, what is, just, what is planted early in the movie is that this Italian church nunnery uh, super center, whatever it is, mm-hmm. they have one of the original spikes that went into Jesus's hand or feet uh, at the cross. My first thought was, I can't wait for the vulture explainer piece to say, <laughs> where are those? Because someone's going to write that piece. I'm like, because well, I actually legitimately wonder, like, do those exist anywhere? Does anybody, anybody have those? But they establish early on, like, oh, this is how old and venerable this place is. They have one of the spikes. Yeah. Well, it turns out that's not just a thing that they mention what they've been doing is that they have been they discovered that there is some trace elements of blood dna from jesus and for years they've been trying to impregnate the different nuns with it to create a new jesus like a super jesus who's going (laughs) to save the world and they go through like all of the all of the, the 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 like the jars essentially of the unsuccessful i mean i mean there's also like a stem cell thing going on in this movie which is also kind of like timely timely and i'm I'm, I'm, (laughs) like i can't imagine like a devout like christian catholic is gonna actually bother to see this movie this is the type of movie like when i grew up and i was raised uh catholic and our like catholic newsletter would have like the movies thou shall not see <laughs> this would be one of the movies where it's like it's very sacrilegious mm-hmm. it, you know it's this and this and i would think oh that sounds fun i should check that yeah. out um, sign me up for that <laughs> sign me up for that uh to date myself uh last temptation of christ was a movie like that from my childhood and i said they're like, do not see this movie. It's terrible. It's, yeah. I'm like, oh, that. Well, if it pisses off all these people, it might be worth watching. But anyway, the Omen, right? It's oh, it's a legacy of this. So. Bring me back for the first Omen, so my so I can you know Catholic Catholicize that one as well. But um, <laughs> it's um so that's so that's the, what's going on. That's the actual like this is what's happening in the movie. Mm. And so the reason why other nuns are like it should have been me. It should have been me. I was confused. Maybe I missed something, Christy. Mm-hmm. So are the nuns all auditioning to be the person who gets selected? Because the other nuns is like, it should have been me. And she gets like really pissed off about it. Yeah. I was unclear. Maybe I missed something. Do they know that that's the deal? That that's actually like, what's going on? Do all the nuns know that they're trying to like in vitro fertilization of Jesus here? Yeah. Is, that, like, is, oh. it, is this like an mm-hmm. America's next top nun type of thing where they're <laughs> competing? I, I, I asked this legitimately because I, I was yeah, I confused by that. I, did, I was like, because some people seem to know and other people don't seem to know what's going on. Uh, I think Isabel knows because she has a higher level of responsibility, right? Oh, I think probably okay. like rank and file nuns don't know, but oh, she gotcha. is like a like a right hand woman to the Reverend mother and so i feel like she knows what the deal is and she's all in on it and um the thing that makes sydney sweeney's character cecilia so desirable is that she died for seven minutes and came back to life and so there's like they they assigned to her this like heightened level of fertility you know or something miraculous exists within this woman already so she's the best possible vessel we see this flashback to her in her childhood and she gets trapped under the ice and she comes back to life and like she's she suffered no brain damage apparently she's fine she's beautiful articulate is, she's sydney sweeney <laughs> this is there a question i had seven minutes that seems like a long that's a long like time a long time i wouldn't recommend that to anybody who's watching or listening to this that she's a miracle bad. though that's the whole point she's a miracle oh, and that's why right. they, they recruit her to this place um and one thing i thought was so interesting with this off the top is it's kind of disorienting as far as its time frame i didn't mention this in the non-spoiler review but like when she gets off the plane and they go through her suitcase you think it could be the 70s like it's an old-fashioned suitcase with like a handle and like snaps that you know open up and she has no cell phone she has a book to learn italian and then she walks out of the airport and people have roller bags like you know like it, it's it's now and right. so that that was it puts you off guard from the very very beginning but it indicates how innocent she is and you know there are newspaper clippings at the it's at the nunnery of her <laughs> miraculous survival of this ice trapping you know so um to answer your first question or your earlier question i did not go through labor like this <laughs> <laughs> i had a c-section nick didn't want to come out i was in labor for 36 hours and then they went in and got him 
And I have a much better C-section scar than Cecilia has because they use the right stuff on me. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad for. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, <laughs> also, in terms of interesting spoilers, okay. You know, I did not because I hadn't watched the trailer before seeing the movie, and mm-hmm. I only knew that it premiered at South by Southwest and saw the stars that were at South by Southwest. I don't know how many people are going to think that Simona Tabasco is actually in this movie more than she is. For people who are fans of The White Lotus both seasons, of course, Sydney Sweeney was in season one, and Simona Tabasco was in the second uh, mm, season. And funny. she's And she's been in a lot of the publicity. I don't know if you saw it, Christy, the two of them did a uh, FMK uh, ah, that's for, funny. <laughs> for, for horror characters. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of creates the impression... That Simone Tabasco is in this movie a lot. She is not. She is in the opening scene of the film. The sort of, um, you know, obligatory, something really terrible is happening to this other character. Right. I wonder what that's about. We'll find out eventually. And so I thought, oh, well, she's a rising star. She is going to show up at some other point in the movie. Yeah. She does not show up at any other part of the movie. And so not unlike... uh like when Itchy and Scratchy go to the fireworks factory, I kept going like, when are we getting to the fireworks factory? Like, when is someone... Because I kept thinking like, oh, so there's going to be a big twist. She comes back and it turns out like, oh, all that terrible stuff that was happening to her and her leg, there's going to be a payoff later. Nope. My biggest spoiler in the movie is that she does not come back. Like, no. that is not, like, it's like she is just at the very beginning of the movie, I guess because she's Italian, and so they cast her. But there's a weird, like, uh, like misdirection in that, where I think some people will be like, oh, she's in the advertising a lot. I liked her in White Lotus. Yeah. They've been on the red carpet together. Interesting. Um, enjoy her at the beginning. You shall not be seeing her again throughout the motion picture. Yeah, she's like whoever the person is that answers the phone at the beginning of a scream movie. Like you never, you never <laughs> see her again, and that's fine. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, and sort of one of the things that are maybe a weakness here that things that had the possibility of being great, as we said in our non-spoiler review, like it doesn't really get great until the end. I feel like a lot of that pacing kind of gets bogged down like it's moody but there are way too many jump scares of her like thinking she sees somebody in the darkness or thinking there's someone behind her in the catacombs the whole catacomb section takes way way too long it's just like the same kind of corridors over and over again and it's a short movie it's only like an hour and 28 minutes i think Mm -hmm. um but that last section there, when it gets going, it really gets going. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I can't believe that all of this exists in a movie that's going to come out in theaters. It is neon and they do take a lot of chances and they were really smart in insisting that we all go to a screening of it versus watching it on a link at home because that communal experience will definitely enhance the whole thing when you see where it goes eventually. Um, yeah, I am shocked that they had her kill the baby, but she has to. She has to denounce this thing that they put inside of her. If she were to do this 180 and go, oh, but I love my baby, you know, that would be, that would seem to negate everything that we have been building toward. And so I think she has to do that as shocking as it will be for a lot of people to see. I thought that was an excellent impression of Sydney Sweeney that you just did, by the way. <laughs> that, was, that was exactly like her. Yeah. That was no, exactly I, like her voice. She's so good in this, though. She is. And I I really appreciate that we were talking earlier about the various kinds of projects she has been gravitating toward. And I like that she wants to show at this age that she has all of that in her, you know, a screwball romantic comedy and a a cool TV series on HBO. And then this gonzo horror movie. And um, it's really canny of her at this age. So and she's good in everything. She's versatile. And reality, you mentioned reality, too. Like, That's a totally different role, so stripped down, like so minimalist and relies, again, on a lot on her face. And that happens here as well. So, I mean, I I liked it better than you did, though. I I would would say, though, that I actually like reality better, that that movie, because I think the sense of her being trapped is even stronger in that movie, partly because the great casting of having two fbi guys who are interrogating her be so much taller than her like it mm-hmm. really works well like you feel like her back is like literally against the wall and so you do feel like really uh scared for her if anybody is uh listening watching by the way and wonders do i need to stay till the end there is no thing at the end after the credits there's nothing like oh the baby actually didn't die so if you want <laughs> to leave at the end of the credits 
Oh, when the credits start, you can. Yeah. There's no there's no bumper at the end or anything. Right. Uh, she doesn't go for, for shawarma afterward. She doesn't go for she doesn't go. <laughs> Boy, I, after killing a after killing my own child, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm famished. And then and then you know Samuel Jackson recruits her for the MCU. I'm not yeah. eating for two anymore, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> By the way, oh my god, <laughs> more movies, more movies need to just have a thing of second trimester. <laughs> third trimester that was funny there was a part of me that went oh we're almost done almost done we're almost we're almost there if the baby the comes the- it's due date we're almost there um okay so tim I, if, if we're gonna tell folks to see it they should see it in a theater with people because it's more fun yes if if one must yes okay. i would definitely i would say that with a group of friends it would be fun uh to see i don't think the movie works ultimately but that would be the best way to see it. or wait for it on streaming with your friends don't see it by yourself you should no. see it with a group of people that's more fun for sure all right well i'm glad i saw it with you you're the best thank you tim thank you